Pull up and murder cash. I got a show today. It's all I'm trying to do. Hustle and motivate. Choppers will throw away. Hustle the other way. That's why they follow me, huh? They think I know the way. Cause I took control of things. Rolling the solo way. And if you got in my train, I make you my protege. Slots in that soldier race. Niggas don't know them days. Take you in back of the bills. Make you expose your rage. Take you across the track. Make you explode the face. Now you official now. But you got a soul to say. I just been cooking that note. I'm about to drop in the fuel. Think if I call it the great. The people gon' call it the truth. I ain't really trip on the credit. I just pay all of my bills. I just respected the guy. Got my name all in the news. Trippin' on all of my moves. Call me on this, got a lot more to prove. Remember I came in this bitch. Fresh out the county with nothing no, on no, lose. No. What I got out of you. But I don't do that shit for nothing. No, no, no. What's up, my good people? Welcome to Good Music Monday. I'm Marcus Watson. Here to bring y'all some good vibes for a little bit. Pay homage to some good people doing good things in this good world that we're living in. I uh, hope everyone's doing well out there. You know, uh, hope you all had a great weekend. I had a great weekend. We had some great fights on uh, on PBC on Showtime this past weekend live in Carson, California. Uh, congratulations to all the cont contestants that were able to go in there and uh, come out healthy and, and go home to their families and also earn some more uh, money to provide for their family. Uh, but major congratulations to Brandon Figueroa with a nice knockout, uh, well, nice, yeah, knockout in, in the seventh round and shout out to Luis Neri too. Um, yeah, so we got a few a few little quick hits. Um, congratulations to my brother from another, David Levy and Brittany Levy. They just got married on Saturday. They, uh, so shout out to the to the newlyweds, you know, congratulations. And um, yeah, we, uh, what else we got? Oh, one more thing about the boxing, too, I want to say, good people. Uh, I love ESPN. I watch it. You know, Sports Center is amazing. I'm going to continue to watch it. But I think that they should they should show all boxing. You know, if you guys think the same thing, go ahead and drop a, a thumbs up or something like that. But, uh, yeah. So, yeah, you know, I bring the good vibes every week. Um, and today, you know, we always have a special guest. Today's guest is, uh, to me, you know, like a living legend himself, basically. You know, he's been, he's been in uh, quite a few films. Uh, behind the scenes on, on films, and also, you know, uh, you know, his whole family's talented, but he's just also just a solid guy. Like I say, he's a he's one of the, one of the greatest actors in our time, and a comedian, uh, social social media, um, you know, guru basically, and um, he's a businessman, a great father, and uh, just all around solid brother from another. Let's waste no more time. Let's welcome Mr. Nick Turturro. What's up, boss? How you feeling, man? I'm I'm feeling all right. The the Yankees are losing right now, so it kind of put me in a bad mood. It's all right. Don't don't let it take you down too much, man. It does. Uh, it's it's my uh, it's my passion. You know, I mean, I love all sports, but I'm a baseball junkie, and uh, when the Yankees are winning, I'm better. When they're losing, I get pissed off. But I'll be all right. I'll survive. It's a That's long right. season. There you go. I was gonna say it's a long season. You know yeah. that, Nick. It's, it's a it's a season. marathon. You know, baseball. A lot like life. It's a marathon. Uh, Absolutely. It'll, it'll drive you insane. I mean, you know, it's because it, it's so tedious, you know, and it's so moment to moment, you know, and yeah. it's just, it, 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 you have to stay with it to understand. Some people find it boring, but it, it's really a beautiful game. It just, it's just filled with ups and downs constantly. Absolutely. I agree 100%. You can have said it better. Um, I'm, a, I'm an avid, you know, a big baseball fan as well. Uh, Brand, I don't know if you know, but my brother Brandon actually played in the major leagues with the Washington Nationals, you know, a little while ago, back in 2006, you know, around that time. Oh, really? I didn't know that. Yeah. He, yeah, he actually no. went up to the show? He actually got... Yeah. He wow. made it to the show, and his, his, uh, his, his major league debut was at, in, in Houston at Minute Maid uh, Park out there in Houston against the Astros. He went two for five with a uh, double and a home run. In his, oh, wow. In his Beautiful. Movie. What was his full name? Brandon Watson. Just Brandon Watson. Brandon Watson. Yes, what, sir. What position did he play? Outfield, center field, left field, you know, but outfield, center field mostly. Man, just to get to that point is, 
You know how talented right. you have to be, but then to stick around is a whole Absolutely. other deal. Because there's a lot of guys that can make it to the show, but they can't for whatever reason, you know. Stick, what, yeah. what separates these guys from double A, triple A to the big leagues, there's something that just separates them, you know? It's crazy. No, I agree. I agree 100%. Nick, I want to say thank you, brother, for taking the time out of your busy day, man, and, and, and you know, giving the good people in here um, some good energy for a little bit. Uh, every once in a while, I will be shouting out the good people in here, too. But thank you just for everything that you've done for us all as a people and motivate us, man. We appreciate oh, you, Nick. My pleasure, man. My pleasure. Glad to be a part of it. You guys are good dudes. You, your brother, your father. You've always been nice to me and my son. So, you know, whatever you want, fire away. Go ahead. That's right. Well, let's let's shoot it, man. Let's get a little bit of insight on you, bro. Like, so I got you born. You were born in in uh, Brooklyn, New York. Were you raised out there as well? No, I was raised in Queens. Okay. I was okay. I was only born like in a Brooklyn hospital, <laughs> but nice. I was really raised in Queens. You know, my brother likes to say we're uh, from the Lower East Side. It's a bunch of bullshit. Uh, yeah. And we, we they actually my brothers they grew up in Hollis, Queens, and then when I was born, they moved to Rosedale, Queens, which is like the end of. Queens, the beginning of Long Island, right by JFK Airport. You know, when the planes, they would come right over my house. Right. I grew up in a small town right there. That's a good deal. That's a good deal. Uh, Queens, huh? So that's, um, did you ever see Hakeem out there from, uh, from I mean, uh, coming to America? I saw a few, few people. <laughs> There's a lot of rappers that came from like uh, nah. uh, Queens Village, LL Cool J, LL Cool J. And all these guys, yeah. Dougie Fresh. Yeah. Um, yeah. There was a lot of rappers that came and then, you know, we had some mafia guys too, John Gotti from who was on Park Howard Beach. I love, uh, I, I love Queens. Queens is I'm not gonna say the forgotten borough, but you know, like Manhattan of course is Manhattan, but then Brooklyn always gets like, you know, Brooklyn. But Queens I think sometimes people forget. I yeah. actually, you know, I love Queens. Gotcha. You know, that's good. So so let me ask you then briefly too, uh how was it for a young Nick back then? Like was it a tough neighborhood, you know, or or how was it, buddy, growing up out there? I mean, uh, the neighborhood was a was a very um a kind of a, you know, mixed neighborhood with Irish, Italian, German, gotcha. some Puerto Rican. Um, you know, it was a kind of a mix of different ethnicities. I had a lot of Puerto Rican friends growing up. People thought I was Puerto Rican, so kind of funny. And I got into baseball, so they were like, oh, Nikki's Puerto Rican. But I'm an honorary yeah. Puerto Rican. <laughs> but um, sure. there wasn't too many uh, black people. I mean, there was a few that came along later. But uh, my brothers, they came from Hollis, and those were neighbors that were more mixed with, you know, white and black. I mean, my brothers, they went to, like, rougher schools. And in a way, I kind of grew up soft. I, I, I wasn't, like, a tough, tough name. There was a lot of, you know, guys that could handle themselves. But I wouldn't say it was, like, a real you know, rowdy neighborhood. I mean, it was a lot of kids, but it was magical because we all played right in the street. We did everything, you know, in the span of three, four blocks, we knew everybody. And we played, you know, uh, pole to pole. We played, you know, we played basketball in front of our, everything. I mean, wiffle ball. Uh, it was a great way to grow up, I have to say. I mean, we may not have had a lot of money, but we had so much richness in the streets with all our friends and then all the nicknames we had. I mean, you don't see like you don't see neighborhoods like that ever, you know. Mm -hmm. And in a way, it was really like when I think about how I grew up and how these kids grew up today, yeah. not even close. They'll never experience that. They'll never understand like, you know, the concept of like a neighborhood. You know, your mother calling you from the porch, Nicholas, it's time to eat. You know, it was just it was it was great. Kids calling from the street, Nikki coming out. They're like, yeah. no, 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 he's not coming out yet. He's eating. So, yeah. that's, that's, you know, I really, I loved that neighborhood. I, lo I loved the memories that I had. I mean, I think it was just, like I said, we didn't, what we didn't have with material stuff and money, we made up for, and so many other, like everything was special. You know, like everything meant something. Like going to a, a fight, we'd have to go see a fight closed circuit. Like we were big boxing right. fans, so my family. We'd have to go fight, watch these fights closed circuit, or we'd have to... You know, like if you went to a baseball game, it was an event that we didn't go, like we didn't have cable. It wasn't 24 seven. Things weren't ex as accessible, but the magic, you know, the memories of the Knicks, you know, back then, early seventies, the Knicks, and then I became a big Yankee fan. I was there when Reggie hit the three homers and jumped on the field. I mean, you know, the memories I have of childhood are, are pretty uh, special. 
Nice. That's what I said, Nick. I, I love it, man. I, I grew up in Inglewood, California, and uh, I, I got I was fortunate enough to, to get that time period what you're saying, like, you know, mom calling you up from over the balcony. Marcus, come on in. You know, uh, Brandon, come on in. Or, you know, that kind of vibe. Nowadays, you're right. It's a little different, but it's okay. You know, it's all right. Uh, so, Nick, speaking of which, when you were young, buddy, can you give us, like, uh, who were some of your inspirations growing up? Uh, growing up, I mean, uh, I had I had different like sports heroes that I loved when I was a young kid. We loved uh, we loved the Knicks. We loved Walt Frazier and Willis Reed. Gotcha. I loved Doc. I, I saw Doctor J in, in the ABA with his afro. I saw vintage yeah. Doctor J. I loved Doctor go- Julius Irving before he how went about, to the NBA. How about Rucker Park? Did you ever go there for that stuff? Well, I heard about Rucker Park. Rucker Park is a legend, but that's I think yeah. that's in Manhattan. You okay. know, but I saw Rick. I liked Rick Barry too. I used to love the ABA, even though like they, you know, the NBA crashed them, and then they took some of their teams. But um, yeah, I loved Frazier. I loved I loved Willis Reed, uh, and then of course with the Yankees, Thurman Munson was my my guy. Thurman Munson, Bobby Mercer. Um, nice. uh, yeah, these are some of the. And then you know, when I was a young kid, we loved the old movie stars like Kirk Douglas. Okay. He was one of our favorite actors when we were kids. Me and my brother went to a premiere. And it's a funny story. Um, my mother and the, was getting pushed by the cops, and my brother, John, was getting pushed. I was a little kid, and I ran onto the red carpet. And I ran into Kirk Douglas, and he, like, picked me up in the air and hugged me. And I guess I was on the, I was on the news or some shit. I was like, so, so I was like, I was probably destined to be in the movies. You know, like, somehow I was, well, we loved yeah. Kirk Douglas, and then, the guy picked me up on the red carpet and hugged me. Um, we loved, yeah, Kirk Douglas. I mean, Burt Lancaster, yeah. Marlon Brando. I mean, some of these guys. And then, of course, you know, we became fans of, like, you know, Robert De Niro, Al Pacino. They became, yeah. like, after The Godfather, those yeah. guys. I mean, I, I had a lot of inspirations. I can't say just, like, you know, one or two. But I would say my father was, um, I kind of looked up, even though my dad was a builder, my dad was kind of like my, was a tough guy. A little bit amateurish. Yeah, that's, uh, that's what I was going to say, Nick. Yeah. What'd you say? No, that's what I was going to I was gonna say. Like, uh, I'm sure out of all those guys, all those inspirations, your, your parents probably were like your biggest inspiration. Oh, so. yeah. Yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah. you know, my dad and my mom, my mom was really like ahead of her time. She was a very smart mm-hmm. lady, never quite got her due, but she always pointed us, you know, in a direction that made us believe, you know, anything was possible without being like, overbearing you know like when you were good at something she gave you the support but she wasn't like a bragger she didn't brag like i was a pretty good basketball player i didn't grow but i had a lot of natural ability as a point guard but uh, they always gave us that even i used to sing they thought i was gonna be a singer but whatever i did you know my mom and my dad you know when he got he really enjoyed me i was the last kid and i think my other brothers didn't get the same maybe because me and him were like i was the baby and I was able to tickle my dad and, and yeah. kept bring out the child in him. But he was so <laughs> funny. He was almost like very naked as a person. Like, I mean, I don't know what they would have made of him today, but he didn't yeah. even know how funny he was. But he was very funny in, in a very raw way, you know, almost Gosh. like in a very Archie Bunker-esque way. Yeah, um, yeah I, get, I mean, you know, he was just, he'd look at you. And my Please. brother John resembles him. They had that kind of look. Okay. Uh, and they had that work ethic. They were just obsessed. And John has that kind of. I'm a little different than them. I'm I'm sort of a rebel, but like <laughs> I'm a rebel, like but without a cause. I don't really have a cause. I don't know why I'm a rebel, but I just kind of go against the grain. I like to go against the the norm. But um, I would say my mom and dad were were huge, and my brother John too was uh, very inspirational. And I mean, yeah, I had all these other people that I love, sports figures, yeah. entertainment figures, you know. Sinatra. I had all kinds of, you know, people that I loved, but I, I think, I still think, you know, deep down, you know, you, you have to go to my parents. Your parents, that's right. Uh, how many siblings did you did you have? I have two older brothers. I have my brother Ralph. He was ten years older. My brother John. Okay. We were five years. We were all five years apart. So okay. One was born in fifty two, fifty seven, and I was born in sixty two. Nice. Okay. Yeah. All right. Cool. So, so did you go to high school in over in, in Queens as well? I went, actually, I wanted to go to high school in Queens. I wanted to go to St. Francis Prep, um, gotcha. but uh, I didn't get in. So I had to go to St. Agnes with all the with all the dummies. They all, took That's all the kids. Away. 
They took all the <laughs> dumb kids from uh, Rosedale. Um, it wasn't a bad high school. It was in Rockville Center, so it was in Long Island, which I didn't okay. want to go to school in Long Island. I was always like, ah, Long Island is a little, it's a little yeah. too soft or whatever. But that was a good. It was a good experience. I mean, uh, cool. I only did a couple of years of college. I didn't finish, and then I became a doorman uh, in New York City at a hotel. Yeah, so, so I was a door. I was a doorman for like about ten years, and I didn't start acting till like you know my late twenties. I was still a doorman when I first started my acting career aspiration. Nice. No, I saw, I saw that. So, and you worked. Uh, I heard Billy Joe. Billy Joe. He he stayed in the uh, in the yeah. building that you worked at. What, yeah, yeah. And he was a, he was a guest that moved in, and he wrote an album there, and I was. I was like a huge fan, Billy Joel fan. So like when the guy first moved in, I was like, wow, I better not like act like some star crazed idiot. And so I just try to treat him like a, I treat him like a regular guy who's from Long Island. And when we became friends, we kind of hit it off. Right. It was funny. He started, that's when he first started dating Christy Brinkley. And he was dating this other chick, Ellie McPherson. He was asking yeah. me like, you know, Nick, what do you think? Like, which one? You know, and I was like, I, I said, you know, Billy, I mean, you, know, you can't lose either one, you know? So it was funny. I had this whole relationship with Billy Joel. And then I heard he came out with a book recently, actually mentioned me. I guess he was a struggling young actor. You know, I'm <laughs> sure he has seen some of the things that probably has gotten a kick out of. I haven't seen him in years, but it would be great to see him because we had such a magical time there at the St. Moritz on the Park. It was kind of a old famous uh, hotel back in the day. A lot of Judy Garland, a lot of people, Mickey Mantle stayed there. It, it had a lot of uh, history, uh, the St. Moritz. It's now a Ritz Carlton, but uh, it was kind of weird. You know, you're, all of a sudden you're idol, and now you're his doorman and one of your idols. And then we we were friends. You know, he'd come out, hey Nick, I was like, hey Billy, what's up? You know, yeah. so um, it was cool. weird because we were both, you know, basically kids from Queens, Long Island. So, right. um, you know, I saw all these stars, and that was before I was in the public eye, and. So I was like yeah. on both sides. It was funny when I went back there as a successful actor. It was just kind of yeah. weird. It was kind of weird, you know. It was yeah. like, oh man, Nick made it or whatever. But I always, I always remembered where I came from. I never, and that was a big part of my life. And I used to stop a lot of people um, in the streets sometimes because I remember when I was on NYPD Blue. Uh, this guy Dennis Franz, one of the stars, asked me, "Goes, were you ever a doorman?" Uh, his friend Joe Montaigne, famous actor from Chicago, goes, he swears that you stopped him and he, you were a doorman. I said, yeah, yeah. I said, I was. I was a doorman. Yeah. You know? So I I mean, you know, I had a couple of pilot deals based on his doorman stuff and we yeah. didn't quite get it to a, a series, but I still think it could be a very, very funny, a funny show. We're developing something now, me and my son, a little different than that, but I, nice. couldn't, play, I couldn't play myself now. I'd have to play like if I did the doorman show, I'd have to get all these young guys because me and my crew, we were all a bunch of crazy young guys. But I could play like the older guy, like a bellman that has been working there for 30 years or whatever. You right. Know? I mean, we never got it made. I mean, I shot something, and but I had so many stories. It was like a revolving door because it was like, you know, I I dealt with the rich, the famous, the all kinds of people. So it was right. kind of interesting. I mean, I had this, you know, uniform, the hat. And I kind of like, it, it was like a show. I was almost like, it was like a show within a show. Um, even when I was working there, I was like kind of working on my, people were like, ah, he's, he's, this guy's a performer. Oh, this guy's going to, you know, it was weird. I was always like, I always knew I wanted to do something, something more creative than that job. But even though I had a lot of fun doing it. That's sweet. No, that's good stuff. Well said, Nick. I love it, man. Obviously, your, your energy is, is natural and raw and real anyways, brother. So I understand yeah. when you say it. You know, you, you yeah. think you stand out, you're a little different or whatnot. You are different in, in a great way, you know. So, thank you. Uh, thank you. So thank you. it makes sense to, to uh, it, it makes sense that you are where you are in life, man, you know. Uh, yeah, know. yeah. I mean, you, you, you have to be because, you know, I mean, it's, people do see through it. Yeah. You know, yeah, so, so I can come across all kinds of people and some people, you know, you, you could tell they got all kinds of, you know, gotcha. you know, uh, all kinds of things up, you know, it's just hard to, to, un to, with me, it's like what you see is what you get. I mean, I, I don't have any, I don't have any fake, uh, you yeah. know, it, it is what it is with me. You know, I'm, I'm either really up or I'm really down or whatever. I mean, yeah. or I go wild, whatever, but it's, it's, it's emotional, but it's also passionate. And it's not like, I'm not a put on, you know, a lot of people just 
they put it on, you know, they put on mm -hmm. an act. And then when you get to know the guy, you're like, well, I know the real guy. Right. You right. know, I know the real guy. I, you know, I'm not saying, hey, I'm not perfect by any means, but, but I try to be true to at least, you know, I've, 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 I've been up to the mountain and back. I've had yeah. the highs and lows. I've seen it. So, That's you right. know, I, I know. I feel like, you know, I've, you know, I've experienced a lot in my life. I mean, more okay. than I probably ever imagined. You know, yeah. probably more than I ever imagined. Even though I always had like a big imagination. I think I always kind of had, you know, I had kind of big dreams or whatever, you know. Yeah. I, mean, I mean, but then to, to live some of them out was great. You know, yeah. I mean, to live them out, it's one thing thinking about it. It's another thing doing it. Absolutely. Right? And, and, and I know what that feels like, too. You know, there's a lot of people that will say, like, how could you do this? Or how could you do it? I'm like, well, you know, there's a way. There's a, I'm telling you, there's always a way if you're, you know, if you're committed, you know. Yeah. Yeah. Just just keep going. That's right. I love it. That's perfectly put. So what was your uh, do you remember your first gig that you got paid for, like acting wise? Yeah, my first um, real gig uh, was was. Um, was actually I had a little pain gig with my brother in this movie Men of Respect, and then okay. first like real gig was with Spike Lee, Mo Better Blues. I uh, I had met Spike as like an extra on Do the Right Thing. My brother was in it. And I went down one night as an extra, and then I I was supposed to go go back the following week, and I never did. Apparently, he liked me. I don't know what. I was just an extra. Got gotcha. you. Uh, and then I got a phone call from him that fall out of the blue i got my number from my brother funny how life goes you know and, and called me up and he asked me if i'd like to do some looping uh for the movie for do the right thing and i and i didn't even know what looping was but i was just i was so i was like spike spike lee oh i didn't well, really did, know spike i mean you know Nick, can, you hit us? Can, you, can you hit us what is looping what is looping for the yeah people? so i said i'll loop i'll loop and i didn't even know what it was what it is is like you know a lot of times when you do a movie They'll add a lot of dialogue. And then sometimes, like with some actors, they'll make them do some lines over. And you'll, they'll either, you know, like you'll have to repeat what you said, do over. Or sometimes they'll have a scene, like a crowd scene, like when they were burning the pizzeria. They wanted people screaming during the pizzeria, the, the burning of the pizzeria and all, these, all the racial tension. So they wanted all this, like I'd look at the screen and I would react like I'm right there. So I would, you know, Spike had me screaming all these racial epithets or whatever. And I, right. was, going, I was going off the dial and he loved it, you know. Because right. I understood all that stuff, you know, being from New York. I understood the whole, all those kind of things, you know, all that mentality. So I was, whatever he was asking me to do, I would look at the screen and then I would just react to, you know, he wanted me to, you know, be really harsh and he wanted me to scream some terrible racial things and, you know, yeah. I, I, he just gave me freedom, so I just went, I went off the dial, and he loved it, loved it. And then from that, he gotcha. decided to put me in a movie and uh, with my brother, and we were playing two like Jewish guys, and it was the first like it was I couldn't believe it that you know he was giving me this opportunity, and I said, wow, I, be I better make you know make the most of this, and I really did. I, I kind of you know really worked hard, and I was like, man, I just hope I can. Hope I don't suck, you know. I hope I can, I can, because there was a lot of good people in the movie, Denzel Washington. You know, but I held my own. I did pretty, pretty damn good. It was a great experience. Wesley Snipes, right? Wesley Snipes was in there too, right? Wesley was in it. Yeah, a lot of people. Robin Harris, all yeah. these people. I mean, I, I was just, uh, I was just so happy to have that opportunity. And then, you know, after it was over, I went back to my job, and and it kind of like, you know, it it made me feel like, wow, maybe. Maybe there's maybe I have something here, and then I, Spike really liked what I did, and then he gave me a bigger part in the next movie, Jungle Fever, and that was like more. I was starting to like really pursue it, get an agent, and then I was, um, I was you know really kind of really starting to hustle, and then after Jungle Fever, I really started to like get a lot of confidence, you know, and then, and then you know I got some other TV work. I started. I did a uh, did like a few little plays. I, um, I I was just getting a lot of, a lot of little things, you know. I was like I was really starting to pursue it too, and I was kind of learning as I was going. You know, I was I had some training. I was a year and 
theater in college years ago, and I studied a little bit privately with this guy, Bob Modica. But more or less, my stuff I was learning in the trenches, you know, on, on, you know, on the job. And, uh, and I was a quick learner. And everybody was saying, yeah, you take direction well. Because um, there are a lot of people that don't take direction well. You know, there are a lot of people that, you know, they don't listen, you know. And I, and I, was, I was kind of a sponge. Uh, gotcha. And I, you know, but it was, I was like, wow, this is way harder than I, but, you know, I started, I, I started getting a lot of confidence uh, after, uh, you know, especially after Jungle Fever. Uh, I started to get a lot of, then year, and then I, a couple of years later, I got a pilot, the comedy, I got a pilot CBS. It didn't become a series, but, so I was, you know, like working my, my way up. Um, and I was still a doorman, but I was working less and less. Yeah. And then the big break was when I got on this NYPD Blue, and I didn't know it was going to be a big, big show. And then I, and then I decided to uh, resign <laughs> and give up my doorman job and say, I'm going to try to either be a full-time actor or I'm, I'm either going to do it or I'm not going to do it. So I got to get rid of the safety net and move to L.A. And, yeah. and then the rest is history. You know what I mean? The rest is, you know, and then the show was a huge hit. And I got yeah. nominated for an Emmy, all these things. And, um, you know, and it was, you know, the start of a new, a new thing, you know, moving from, I never thought I'd leave New York. I was 30 something years old, and, you know, and then, um, and then I fell in love and met my wife out, out here. And then, um, you know, a lot of things happened to me in the nineties. It was, it was kind of a, Yankees started winning a lot of great things. <laughs> I was on a hit show. I mean, everything <laughs> fell into place. I had my dream girl, you know, yeah. um, yeah. And then when I think about the 90s, those were the best years of my life. It's not that my life is over, but I would yeah. like to have like a rejuvenation of things. You know, you know life is funny. It's like you want to like not reinvent, reinvent yourself, but also, wow. you know what I mean? Get that kind of like that, that, that feeling back, you know, that hunger back. You know, when you were first doing it, it was, yeah. so, it was so fresh. It was so new, you know? Yeah. I remember like when we were doing Jungle Fever, I did this other movie, Federal Hill in Rhode Island. Everything just felt so new and fresh and you know, when you're hungry, when yeah. you're hungry, it's it's a it's different. You know, you you just you do it for you do it for the love of it. You know, and you see that with people, even like successful yeah. people, even successful fighters, they they make too much money, they don't have that hunger no more. Yeah. They don't have that same. You know, you know what I mean. You, you see it, yeah. and it's um, absolutely. It's, we, I was just talking about this with my brother and my father today. Just like literally earlier really? today. You're right. Absolutely right. But but I know you still have the hunger because let's fast forward to like about a few years ago you were in a, I believe you guys got a war for this movie too you were in Black Class Klansman yeah. with uh, Spike Lee yeah. um, talk to us about the Spike Lee situation and and that and just how cool is it working with Spike is he hard to work with or you know um, no no he, he's he's I mean Spike is he's great to work with I mean he's um you got to kind of know get to know him because he can be a little intimidating. You know, he's a, he's a small guy like me, but he carries a lot of weight. You know, I mean, yeah. like, you know, you know, he's in charge and a lot of people are afraid of him, but I know him and we have a long history, you know? So he's yeah. like, you know, he called me up. He's like, Nick, I got something. And you're like, all right, what is it? You know, don't worry. I got you. I was like, I didn't know much about the film. I really didn't. And um, it was called 311 before it was Black Klansman. And... Okay. And I, my character kind of came on later in the film. And I didn't know that much about it going into it. And I think okay. it was weird. Like, I approached it that way. Like, I didn't want to know. And it kind of my character comes out of nowhere. And I didn't even know, you know, because Spike hadn't had, like, a big hit in a while. So this was kind of his sort of yeah. comeback, you know, movie in a way. Um, yeah. It was a, and a really, really good movie. So, but I love working with him because we have a good rapport. Um and he's, I mean, he lets you, you know, years ago, we used to improvise, come up with stuff. I mean, he's good that way. I mean, he's a little more business-like these days, but uh, he's still fun to work with. You know, he brings up the old movie, starts reciting lines to me. We're doing lines from Jungle Fever. And, um, you know, we went to a couple of great Yankee games in 2019, me and Spike sitting on the Yankee dugout. So, I, yeah. I you know, I really, um, I dig him. I, I, I like his style. And gotcha. I find I find he's exciting to be around. Yeah. Um, you know, it's exciting to work with directors like that. You know, you yeah. know who's in charge, and then especially with people that you have a a rapport with or a history with. I mean, uh, you know, I wish I 
had that with more people. Um, yeah. But, but you know, he's definitely special to me because he yeah. also gave me my first start. And he was the, the first guy. To, you know, and you never, you can't ever forget that. Whoever kind of gave you, opened that door for you, you'd be like, you know, if I didn't meet this guy, who knows? I might have been doing something else. You know, yeah. that, that, that triggered something in me. So, yeah. um, you know, we've had a few, you know, couple of bouts, arguments here and there over the years. But, but overall, I, I really have a lot, of, uh, a lot of respect, a lot of admiration for Spike. Uh, nice. You know, nice. he makes me laugh, and I make him nice. laugh sometimes too. So, you know. I'm sure, I'm sure you do, man. Awesome. That's a uh, shout out to my girl, adorable nurse in here, and my boy T. Scotty in here. But, but briefly, I want to ask you too. Did you, uh, did you like have any, did you think about like if you play and do the right thing? And even though he killed, that was a, a classic movie, but think about if you and your brother actually were the two brothers. Did you ever oh. think about that? Like, you know? Yeah, I did. I mean, I was, I was, I was, I, 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 I did think about that because I was just starting to get interested in acting and nothing against Richard Edson. He was good yeah. as the other brother, but I mean, if I was ready and I, and, and I had come of age at that time. That yeah. could have been really wild. That could have been really. I mean, I, I think John was. I think in a lot of ways, John almost steals that movie. Even not yeah. only because he's my brother, but he's so yeah. good in that movie. He's so good. And then I always, yeah, that would have been interesting. I wasn't yeah. quite ready then. You know what I mean? I wasn't quite ready. But, but a couple of years later, yeah. I would have been ready to. You God. know, I, I went. I went toe to toe with him in Jungle Fever. But right. uh, even he goes, Jungle Fever, your, your focus was off the wall. For whatever yeah. reason, I locked in. Sometimes you yeah. lock in and you get yeah. in a zone. And we rehearsed for weeks and weeks. And so that by right. the time you went to do it, like today, there's no rehearsal. You show up. You got to do it. Not the same. But okay. you know, when you lock in, it's like a guy when he's hitting, he's in a zone. You know, he could, all of a sudden, he's just feeling it. And I just had the Sergio Takini suit and had crazy haircut and yeah, I just was I was there you know I didn't have to think about it I was just like I was in a I was in that place you know and I mean right. if I was like that time and then I did do the right I mean yeah it could have been explosive I mean yeah. you know do the right thing is a great movie Richard Edson he worked as the other brother but yeah, yeah that yeah. could have been something but you know I, I don't I don't really think about those things too much I mean because you don't really have no control, and I wasn't in that place. I just went down to the set, and I saw what was going on. And I was like, "Wow!" I didn't know who even Spike was, and I was like, "This looks really interesting." That's why I said, "Maybe I could I be an extra or something?" Because I liked the whole atmosphere I saw. And he was like, gotcha. oh, "I could have got you maybe a little part or something." I was like, "Well, no, no, I just go down, you know." And it's funny how life. It's funny how life goes. Like you know, you could go somewhere, do something, meet somebody. And it, you don't know what that thing leads to. Like, right. you know, if I'd right. never done this, if, if I had missed that flight, I would have never met my wife on that flight. Or, or if I had never went down and was an extra, who knows? Yeah. I might have not even pursued acting. I mean, who knows? That's true. What's up, Nick? Nick, I see you, brother. How you doing, man? Salute. Good, my man. Good to see you. We're one of the best good. musicians. Speak well, shoot, while well, we got Nick right here too, Nick Jr. There, let's let's do. Um, how do you feel about what's up, buddy? How do you, how, how do you feel about? Let me ask Pops. How do you feel about him pursue about him pursuing his music uh, career and just doing his thing? Like, how does that make you feel, Pop? Oh, I I, I love it because uh, you know he's 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 so passionate about this music, and when he first started, you know he was like he was okay, but he's yeah. come a long ways, and he's just added. He's added. He's passionate. And he's getting better and better at it. I have to say. I mean, I mean, nah. a guy that doesn't—he's not even a musician, but he's like self-taught. And yeah, he started really out as a DJ, and now he's putting out record after record. And he's ambitious yeah. as hell, probably more ambitious than me. And yeah. um, I think he's—he's he's, you no, know, he's on his way. He's on his way to some something good. I don't know—I don't know exactly what it is, but he's—he's he's definitely yeah. got the eye of the—he's got the eye on the prize. And uh, I think right. he's. He's, you know, he's in the right, he's in the right arena. He knows when he understands what's That's going right. on today a lot more than me because it's a different world today. But, yeah. and his music is getting good, man. It's getting better and better. Yeah. I mean, and the yeah, thing about right. it is it's original. It's not like, he doesn't sound like everybody else, which I kind of like because there's a lot yeah. of dudes out there and they all sound the same. And I'm like, I can't tell one from the other. 
you know? So, yeah. um, no, that's I, think, right. I think he's, I think he's, you know, he just did a dope ass, and his third music video, but this one, I I got to make a cameo in it. He didn't put me in the right. other ones. So he let me make a cameo as a mob guy. But it's a, that's this one is pretty, pretty funny. Uh, that's good. That's good. Nick, Nick, what up? Uh, Nick, Nick, how can the people, how can the good people in here follow you, bro, and find, like, follow your, your movement? You can follow me at, at Nick the Third, N I C K T H E, three eyes. And on Spotify, Apple Music, YouTube, it's just Nick, Nick. Yeah, Nick dash okay. Nick. That's right. Yeah, and we got right. another celebrity in the house, too. Um, I don't know if you've heard of this guy. <laughs> what do you got, Nick? We got a big time celebrity. Where is he? Is he around? Yeah, he's he's on TikTok. He's been with he's me for good. over twenty years. He's my wife's, he's my wife's cousin, and he's almost like my surrogate son. Um, I fell in love with this Filipino kid like twenty okay. something years ago. His name is Gabe, but okay. he goes by the name of White Claw Gabe. Pull him up. Uh, right. He's huge on TikTok. He's That's so it. funny. He's hysterical. He's got like a half a million. Kids are insane. College kids. I went to yeah. Miami Beach with him, like, White Claw Gabe, White Claw Gabe. Yeah. I mean, he, he's probably going to get sponsored by them. Or, or you guys got to just go. He curses a lot, but he's yeah, hilarious. Sure. He's so funny. Yeah. Come here, Gabe. Uh, I want you to sweet. see his face. This is White Claw Gabe, a legend. White Claw Gabe. Gabe. <laughs> nice to meet you. What's your name? I'm Marcus Watson, Gabe. I'm the Rocking God. Nice to meet you. <laughs> Gabe is now a, a legitimate celebrity. White Claw Gabe. Is like an influencer, and okay. once you when, uh, you're gonna become a fan, you watch. I mean, this guy is. You gotta well, have him at like one of the fights or something because he's just yeah. he's funny as come, hell. Yeah. You gotta come to one of the fights for sure with with, with Nick yeah. Senior and Nick Nick for sure, man. So, yeah, I just want great. you to see his face. But when Pleasure. you get it, when you check you him out, you're gonna pee in your pants. I got you. So, yeah. so good, good. Thank um, you. Nice to meet you. Bye. <laughs> All right. Peace, yeah. Now hey, Nick. Funny. Speaking of which, so now since you're talking about social media, uh, how he how he took over, he's taking over that, and your son is. You've uh, you've got breaking back. I mean, breaking bread uh, podcast. Yeah, um, which is amazing. And uh, and uh, how did that come about? Yeah, it's a it's a it's a great podcast. I've kind of put it on on the back burner for a while, but I might get it going again because everybody's been asking me about it. Um, okay. It came about. I met. I met this met this guy at Showtime, and we were gonna do like a podcast just on baseball. And mm -hmm. then I thought baseball was too limiting. And then I kind of brought in my son and this company called Malka, M A L K A. I think they do now the Mike Tyson one, and they had done some stuff. They were kind of working with this guy at Showtime, and we never quite got on the air at Showtime. But um, okay. it 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 became a really good show. They shot it, they produced it, they um. But um, it got a little expensive, I guess, to make it. So they've given me the rights to it. So, but we had the quality of it was really good. You know, it was really yeah. good. I had a lot of, a lot of great guests. I mean, all yeah. kinds of people, actors. I mean, comedians, some athletes. Um, and and I think it was a really, you know, it's a really good show. And I might, I might just do it from home. Um, That's right. Because I kind of know how to do it now, you know. Um, yeah. And it just kind of came about. Um, because it was going to be like a, a whole thing about me being a hardcore baseball fan, all this. And then I said, well, maybe I, I don't want to just limit myself to that, you know. Um, yeah. But no, it was yeah. good. I, I enjoyed doing it. And I might, I might do it again. I just didn't want, I didn't want to do it like, you know, half ass. I like the quality of that show. So if I do it again, I want to kind of do it with, you know, uh, similar quality, you know. But maybe it yeah. might, be even, might even be better now because, you know, I've had so much practice doing it. It's just right. that after when the COVID thing happened, and I kind of like lost my, my I don't know, you know, the spirit or whatever. I understand. But, I understand. Well, I yeah. said, well, I, said, I, I think I speak for all the good people in here. We want it back, so make sure you get it right. Whenever you yeah. get it right, we we we'll waiting on you. Also, how Absolutely. about you, you? You know, you broke the internet with your with your uh, social media posts at the Yankee games and everything, yeah. man. Talk yeah. to me about that, bro. Yeah, my Yan my Yankee stuff is legendary. I think it's you know I've been on Fox. I've been, I, yeah. I definitely you know people know how how hard I take this baseball stuff and how far I take it. I actually think that you know if Fox or MLB would you know have the courage to like put a guy like me who's like a legitimate fan on, 
I almost feel like they feel like I'm explosive and maybe like they can't control me. But yeah. people are like, they need a guy like you in the stand. They need like a, a, the, the guy on the street. Uh, people want to go to a game with me, watch a game. Like even right now, I got the game on and they're losing tonight. So I, I'm not even getting a chance to, you know, I, you know, voice my, when I get aggravated, people love it. Because they know I'm on every pitch. They know that I'm in there. But I'm not just a company guy, you know. And I think baseball kind of needs that. So other sports do it better. But it's just so bland sometimes. It's so corporate, you know. And I feel like I'm like that, I'm like that outsider, you know. A I'm, a, I'm a fan, he says, of the wrong sport. Which could be true, Marcus. Could be yeah. true, you know. I mean, nah, uh, maybe, it, maybe, I'm, maybe I'm too wild for baseball. You know, no, 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 no. I think, I, think, I think that's what baseball needs. I think baseball needs a guy just like you because you're raw, real, energetic for sure. And, uh, and just and, and it brings some more enthusiastic people to, to follow the, the sport and, and, and take it from being like an old man sport to more yeah, of a – Exactly. You know, but, you know, but, but we need them to step up and do something. You know what I mean? But it's yeah. like – it's just uh, the, too many guys that have been running that game – you know, and they yeah. need some fresh blood. And I feel like at least, you know, the real fans, they're with me. They know when they're watching the game, like, what's Big Nick going to say? What I'm going to – they know how I'm going to react. Or they know, right. like, sometimes when I might have a tirade. But it has to happen in the moment. It has to happen organically. I just okay. can't go g get mad well, for no reason. I have to, like, you know, I'm not like White Claw Gabe. But that's a whole <laughs> different thing. My yeah, stuff I has to come right out of the moment. You know what I mean? I and and, and yeah. But unfortunately – it's it's not a sport that he's right that's very you know i don't yeah. know in the social media world it's 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 kind of yeah. it's it's weird yeah i understand no i understand yeah. like yeah basketball they're, they're trying to keep it young and funky yeah and but i guarantee you if they put me out there and they got behind me i could only help them that's it i could only that's help it. them is yeah. because when i popped up you know like they had me on the pregame a couple of years ago yeah. with a rod big pop it was legendary yeah. I like that. I knocked it right out of the park. I went in there cold and ba-boom. I was like, A-Rod was hugging me and Big Poppy was giving me. And I'm like, because they don't have anybody like me. Yeah. And they yeah. never will. They yeah. never well, will. But they, yeah, right. but they had the courage to give me a call. And shit, I would, you know, it, would, it wouldn't be expensive. Yeah, you know? that's, that's right. Well, I'll but say. Maybe, you know, who knows? Maybe I'll create something. I think, I think it will have been. And even if it even if it doesn't make uh, everyone everybody took notice for sure we all know yeah listen the world took yeah. notice yeah and people know the people know yeah. you know you go out yeah. you go out on the street and they tell yeah. you like on the street I, you right. know you could be fake famous yeah you could be a fake this a fake that but I go out in the real world my friend absolutely they know that I'm real they know that uh -huh. that's why people respond to me and I can walk around on the street and I can yeah. hang with anybody. You know what I mean? I can hang and I can talk sports or I can talk talk shop because I know that I that I'm legit. I'm not okay. like some wannabe guy, you know what I mean? I, yeah. I actually I'm a real fan. I've never lost that. and I don't think you should ever lose that. Even if you're like even if you're in the wherever you are, that there's still that little bit of amateurish in you that you still yeah. are like a fan of something. You know, even if you're you're good at something, that doesn't mean that you can't be you know, you can't be a yeah. fan. You can't be, you know, if you lose that, then I think you lose a lot of humility. I agree. I agree. You got to You got to enjoy while we're here. I like that. Well said, Nick. So let me ask you, Nick, uh, you know, I got to touch on, you played a lot of infamous roles, but uh, you were in the longest yard with uh, Adam Sandler. Of course, you're in a few movies with Adam Sandler, but the longest yard, Brucey, everybody loves Brucey. You know that, man. You know, you're hilarious, bro. How was it working with Adam Sandler? Oh, with Adam, it was great. Yes. It was great. Okay. I mean, it was like my first big, like, you know, I had done some funny stuff and things that people had seen, but not to that exposure comically because they knew me more as a dramatic actor. But, but a lot of people saw me on David Letterman. They saw, they saw like, comic chops in me. Even though I came up in the drama world, I think I was always a bit of a comedian inside. Not a comedian on stage, but I was a good storyteller, and I made a lot of people laugh. And even in my acting, people always said, a lot of funny moments with you and yeah. so i think you know sandler gave me a chance put me in the movie and then he added so much stuff for me he kept adding lines adding lines and it was like a little part at the beginning that became like this legendary part and um 
I had to credit Adam. He he kept feeding me. You know, I have to Toro say this, have him say that. And he yeah. really um I have That's to say amazing. he really uh he got behind me and he, he was like, You're funny, dude, man. You're really, really funny. And it was a great experience. There was so much testosterone and uh, yeah. all yeah. kinds of people. I got my grandson yeah. here. You wanna see my grandson? Yes, yes sir. Yeah. Come here, say hi. Beautiful. Beautiful. Look at this guy. He's beautiful. Yes, sir, hi, Santino. Say hey, hi. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, swing. Show me a swing. Yeah, that's is he, it. Is he, Nick, is he 10 years old? Uh, Nick, is he 10 years old? No, he's like 16 months. He's a know, big guy. Beautiful. Look at him. Say hi, Santino. Say hi. <laughs> he has that binky in his mouth. He has that yeah. binky in his mouth. Uh, I love it. Yeah, I love, I love it. He's, 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 uh, he's, you know, we're, we're like helping to raise him and it's, um, that's right. It's, uh, it's, like I'm a, it's like I'm a dad again. I'm a grandpa, but it's like, like yeah. you're a grandfather? I'm like, yeah, I'm a grandfather. You know, I mean, you know. You, um, well, you heard the key word in there, father, you know? You still yeah, a father. But, get, but, get, and, but get back to Adam. He, he's, he's awesome. And yeah. guy, he's mm -hmm. nice to everybody. I mean, he has all his friends and he has a whole gang around him. Nice. Um, okay. But um, yeah, I mean, that's cool. uh, a lot of fun. That was a lot of fun. I mean, there's all kinds of people in that movie. And yeah. the kids love yeah. it and they love Brucey. So, you yeah. know, I've, I've often thought about, you know, what if we did like a spinoff with Brucey or whatever? Could be something, you know, it could be, it could be funny as hell. Um, I think, think that would be great. I think that would yeah. be real good. Yeah, everybody will love I, that. You'd have to get the rights to use the character. But I think it could be, it could be a hoot. Well, Adam, Adam Sandler and, and all the good people over there at, uh, you know, Happy Madison Films and whatnot, if you're watching this, make sure we you guys get the rights and you guys get behind it and you know collab with Nick and make the spinoff. Let's make it happen. Thank I you. like it. Thank you, yeah. Marcus. So, Appreciate it. So Nick, let me take it back to uh, this came from one of us, uh, uh, one of the good people in here. They asked a question. Tyrus Lindsay, he he asked, How was um how was it you were a a guest commentator, a guest announcer in, in WrestleMania eleven? Yeah, early on. I, how was that experience? Oh, that was great. They was uh, they treated me wonderful. I did these commercials with all these wrestlers, and then was out in Connecticut. Sweet. And I actually announced this one big match with this guy Diesel, uh, Kevin yeah. Nash, who was Kevin Nash was one a big funny guy in the Longest Yard, and um, it was great being around those people. I was young, and I was with Jenny McCarthy, and uh, was the other blonde girl from the Baywatch. Uh, yeah. It was a, it was, it was, it was, a, it was a riot, you know. All these things that I was getting when I was on the series, you know. They wanted me to do WrestleMania. Then they did these commercials for ESPN uh, with me and this guy playing Abe Lincoln, revitalizing baseball, and all these things that came about, like, you know, because I was on this show, and then you know, and then guest appearances on Letterman, and people, you know, I, people were always reaching out for me to do. I think they saw that I was that I had a lot of personality or whatever. They they saw that I had, even though on the show I was like a choir boy, just quiet. I yeah. really didn't have, like a, I didn't have a wild, my character was very like straight. But outside that character, I was way more gregarious. So people okay. saw that and at that time they, they you know, they jumped on it. You know, yeah, you know, we want Nick to do this, want him to do that. And I was sort of, you know, I was a natural for a lot of that stuff because I love the uh, fighting. I love sports. I love these things. I mean, I'm a yeah, people yeah. person, so I guess I, I just it was a uh, that was a lot of fun. I remember. I mean, That's all cool. those things. I mean, WrestleMania, um, many other things too. Yeah. Okay. Well, then now let me ask you uh, before I let you go. We almost done. Uh, what advice would you give to a young entrepreneur, or aspiring actor? You know, trying to come up. Well, you know, what, what what advice would you have for them? I would say, you know, you know, learn the craft, respect the craft, learn, learn what you're doing and however you're going to do it, whether you do it privately or you're going to do it in college or, you know, but it's a, um, it's, 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 it's not an easy racket. Make sure that you love it. And if you're not committed, don't even try it because it's filled with rejection. It's too hard. It's too difficult. Uh, but if you have the passion and you have the drive um, and you're committed, then you got to, if you're going to do it, you got to do it a hundred percent. Can't do it half ass. You can't, well, I'd like to try it. That's not good enough. Yeah. Too many people want it. One out of a million make it. But 
if that's what you you know if that's your passion yeah then you got to you got to work at it and you okay. got to develop yourself too because you know if you don't develop yourself you can maybe only go so far and some guys yeah. they handsome they got maybe they got great looks and sometimes that's enough to get them over but i would say you got to really you got to work guys don't work hard enough at it you know and um it's a skill and yeah. the talent but it's show business is a rough game that's why they call it show business you know it's like boxing you know you've been involved in boxing your whole life that world yes. it's a tough world right it's a tough yes. world absolutely and, and only the tough ones survive you know right so you right. know if you got the stomach for it yeah not everybody has the stomach for it because people will tell you you suck this that they'll reject you you're like man that this is horrible and it's right. not an easy game. It's not for everybody. Gotcha. It's not. But if it's for you, then you got to commit. Pursue it hard. That's right. Well said. I like it. So, all right, Nick. So, um, you, matter of fact, one more. I'm sorry. If you could do a bio on anybody, a bio movie, uh, who would you want to portray? Oh, if I could portray somebody? Yes, sir. Um... I probably would like to play a fighter because a I'm, I'm kind of built like a, a lot of people thought like many times in airports and they nice. thought, uh, they said, you kind of look like you were a prize fighter or this, like they, they weren't sure what I was. Yeah. Um, I'll tell you something. I mean, I, yeah. I saw this documentary on him, but he's Puerto Rican and all this stuff. I mean, uh, a couple of guys that come to mind, like Hector Camacho, <laughs> Hector Camacho, I was gonna say, yeah. so colorful, and the documentary was great. Yeah, I liked it. That killed. He's an interesting guy too. The guy that had the fights with Mickey Ward, Arturo Gotti. Arturo Gotti, yeah, Italian guy from Canada. Um, I think yeah. I would like to play. I almost played this fighter from Boston years ago. The movie never got made, but uh, Camacho would be. Uh, that would be challenging, you know. I mean, but I'm getting older now, so I might be too old for these guys. I mean, like. You know, I might be. Yeah. Doing no, no, they make it work. I like it. I think that. I think that's. Uh, I think you nailed it for sure. You nailed it for sure. Yeah. Um, yeah. No, thank you. Okay, Nick. So then, let me, uh, I do this thing like this and like that. So I'm gonna ask you uh, two things, and you can say you can say both. But for instance, like Mets or the Yankees. Yankees. And now you don't even ask that question. Easy call, huh? <laughs> yeah, easy call. Come on, I'm. Uh, anyone in the world knows what kind of Yankee fan yeah, I am. Exactly. All right, so then Knicks or Nets? Knicks. Knicks. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Even though I have affection for the Nets in the ABA. Yeah. In I the got you. ABA. I was a Net fan of the ABA, Dr. J, Rick Barry. Yeah. Not so much the NBA. Gotcha. But when, but when they were in the ABA. Gotcha. Okay. So then we go with boxing or MMA? Boxing, always. That's my guy. Even though go. I've become a fan of MMA. Uh, but I'm a purist. I still think, you know, boxing is, I go way back, you know, my dad, we watched eight millimeter films, Joe Lewis and Tony Zell. I'm, I'm a, kind of a boxing historian. So yeah, boxing. Nice. Okay. So then now, you know, you, you're uh, California now, LA, Los Angeles native, basically. Uh, so Dodgers or Angels? Don't like either one. There you go. All right. You take it there. That's good. Uh, Lakers or Clippers? Don't like either one either. <laughs> there you go. You're still in New York. There you go. That's in New York. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. Uh, hip hop or R and B? Um, I'm gonna say R and B. There you go. Even though yeah, I like, like hip hop, that. I do like hip hop, but I, I I'm more of an old school R and B guy. Dig it. So then, that, let me ask you then: jazz or classical music? Jazz. Jazz. Yes, sir. I love jazz. Okay. Um, Godfather or Scarface? Ooh. Well, I had to say Godfather 1, Scarface 2. But I love both. <laughs> but Godfather is probably a masterpiece. Yeah. Yeah. I got you. Uh, so that's good. All right. Well, Nick, uh, one of your favorite songs from my... Wait, I can't hear you. Can, can. I 
A QR aí. Aham. Uhum. Nah, uh, let me see. Uh... Um, well, it's okay. Can you hear me, Nick, or no? Um, no, okay. It's... Let's see, maybe... Nick, Nick, log out, log out, log out, and then come back in. Log out, and then come right back in. There we go. You know, it wouldn't be right if we didn't have any technical difficulties, and that's okay. But once again, we're here with the with the great, talented Nick Taturo. Uh, I sh I'm showing on the screen him and his brother, uh, John Taturo. You guys seen these guys in, in countless movies, you know, movies like uh, – like we said, Black Klansman, uh, um, Jungle Fever, Mo Better Blues, uh, Do the Right Thing, all these, all these classics. Well, here we go. Let's try to get them back now. Okay. Oh, here we go. Yeah. Hey, buddy. Yeah, yeah. So, where were we? We Godfather Scarface. Yeah, you said. Yeah, you said both pretty much, though, right? Like, well, I said the Godfather. In my book is a masterpiece, and okay. Scarface is like a classic. Yeah. Um, but I mean, you know, I, I don't. It's hard to top the Godfather. It's gotcha. great. Scar, Scarface is great too. Don't, yeah, yeah. Don't get me wrong, but yeah. I don't like to. You know, it, it's hard. If you gave me a a choice of like five or ten mob movies, Scarface would be in there. No, that's I love it because shout out to once again shout out to Monty County Gems in here and my mother. Is in here. My mom said Godfather. She she loves Godfather so yeah. much. She was gonna name me and Brandon uh, Luca. I, I believe I was gonna be Luca Brasi. Luca Brasi. Yeah. yeah and then, well, my, and then... my daughter's Apollonia and my grandson is Santino. So you, <laughs> yeah, know, you, you can't you can't right. mess with the Godfather one and two. Then yeah. you got Goodfellas. Then you got Scarface. And yeah. you got you know you got Casino. You got Once Upon yeah. a Time. America. There's there's classic movies. There are a lot of guys that want to put some of these movies in there that I don't put them in all-time greats. They're good, yeah. but there's yeah. a difference between being good and great. Yeah. But when you get all great, it's like the Hall of Fame. Like some guys get in the Hall of Fame. I'm like, was he great or was he very good? <laughs> right, right. But I agree. Me, it's like, oh, he's a great, great fighter. Wait a minute. Yeah. Was he a very good fighter or was he an all-time great? Right. Super, yeah, all right. Right. You know, you say Floyd Mayweather. It's an all-time great. Roberto Duran. It's an all-time great. Chavez Senior, right, exactly. Like yeah, all time great. Canelo's becoming that now. You know, yeah. but it takes uh, a while to see the guy's body of work. What's my guy back? Rocky Marciano. Rocky Marciano. <laughs> That's right. Joe yeah. Lewis, all time Joe great. Yeah. Marciano. Uh, I love it. Great. I mean, you know, like Ali, all time great. I mean, Ty Tyson, he could have been, but he's he's not. Yeah, he's not. Okay. You know. I got to understand. I like that. That's well said. My, my auntie Connie, she said, masterpiece is a great word, which you said uh, about Godfather. It's a masterpiece. You know, it's a masterpiece. Yeah. But, so, you know, the people that told me, oh, I never saw it, I go, what? You never saw the Godfather? You yeah. need to do your homework. You got a lot of work to do. You yeah, know? That's crazy. That's crazy. To do. I'll give you, you got an assignment. You know what I mean? Yeah, absolutely. So, Nick, let me. This is uh, I, from my understanding. I believe one of your favorite songs is uh, by Barry White. Yeah, can't get enough of your love. Love it. Love Barry White. Go wild. It just Go gives you. Line. It gives you a good vibe, basically. Oh yeah, yeah. I got my son into him now. Now he okay. loves Barry White. Yeah. Even though he's a big, you know, hip hop guy, whatever. But yeah. I mean, Barry White is classic. Let me play a little bit. Let me play a little bit and tell me how this sounds for you, buddy. Let me see. I heard people say too much of anything. Yeah, turn that baby up. I don't know about that. It's high. It's low. 
made love. Yeah. Oh yeah. Then it seems to me like it's enough. It's just not enough. Come on. Just not enough. Oh yeah, Barry. Bring it home, baby. Oh yeah. Love you, love, baby. Come on, how can you not love this? I don't know. Yeah. Oh yeah, some things I can't get used to. Oh yes. I how I try. I know. Teddy Pendergrass too, man. Teddy. Yeah, Teddy is you heard Teddy Pendergrass sing. I sang it at my wedding, lady. I sang okay. it at my wedding, and I, I brought the house down. And uh, yeah. but Teddy Pendergrass, man, he, he sang it, and it you know, brought tears down my face. I got you. Now, uh, amazing. He's a legend. Uh, Nick, one. I, I got to ask you one more. I'm sorry. A question about. Uh, uh, you, like I said, your, your brother is a talented John Turturro, and and really? and your your cousin. Really? Your cousin is, yeah, exactly, uh, talented. Have you have you guys worked on anything together? Yeah, well, we worked, me and John, we worked on Mo Better Blues. We worked on Jungle all Fever. Three, all three of you all? Uh, no, just me and him. He's worked okay. with Aida on a lot of different couple of plays. She's been in some of his movies that he directed. One movie he directed, his first movie, Mac, which is about my dad. I'm in that movie, his first movie. It's a really good movie. I have a funny yeah. part in it. It's called Mac, M-A-C. You should check it out. You'll love it. He directed okay. it about my dad and, and my uncles. My brother plays my dad. And then he directed another movie called Romance and Cigarettes that Aida is in, which is shot in Rosedale. And that is about my family. That is about my brothers and me, except instead of three boys in the movie, he turned them into three crazy girls. Okay. Okay. You know, and James Gandolfini, who plays Tony Soprano, brilliant actor. But, I mean, I The Sopranos is a like the greatest drama of all time. Yeah. Um, so Aida was in that movie, and she was in a few other things with John. Uh, so John has worked with me on this other movie about Monday Night Football, Monday Night Mayhem. We nice. worked in Rome a couple of years ago on a miniseries, biblical thing, um, mm -hmm. period thing. And okay. um, so we have separately worked with John a lot. Me and Aida did this little pilot that I produced. We didn't sell it. We almost sold it. And that was the first time we ever acted together. It was mm. called Over the Hill. And um, I shot and directed something with my friend Bentley Kyle Evans. And, uh, uh, you know, we, um, we, we were pretty good together. It was the first time we had ever. And she's a wild girl. She's also very explosive. She's a Totoro. So yeah, you know, this family of Totoros are like, they're wild people. Right. Uh, That's good. We're, not, we're definitely not the Brady Bunch. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you know? no, ain't, ain't nothing wrong with that. <laughs> no, yeah. ain't nothing wrong with us. We're just a different bunch. You know what I mean? I mean, That's the right. Totoros are all, all, there's the world and then, <laughs> and then there's us. <laughs> you know, I, I'm not comparing anything. I'm just saying, it's like, I think when they made us, yeah. it was like, oh, these guys are a little different. Yeah. Yeah, no, they were a little different. You know what I mean? Yeah, you just know? out here. So, I, I can yeah, attest. But it's what makes us uh, all, you know, kind of unique. We're very different. I mean, John is a genius. I, I mean, he's one of my idols. I mean, I really look up to him. My older brother and uh, very, very smart. And I eat it too. Very smart. Very, very talented. Very wild. You know, get into fights with her and arguments. And, yeah. But, uh, I, but I love it. I love it. No, I, can, I can attest because our family's the same way, man. So, you know, I understand, yeah. brother. You Just, get it. You get the family. You understand what I'm talking about, right? Absolutely. So, yeah. so well, um, how can the, how, how can the good people out here follow you, buddy? Oh, you can yeah. follow me on Twitter, Nick Totoro One. Also mm -hmm. TikTok, which I have probably a, a much bigger following on TikTok and Instagram. Mm -hmm. But my my son runs that Instagram. So gotcha. uh, yeah, Nick Totoro One. I'm easy to get. Um, yeah, just you know, I'm, I'm I'm out there daily a lot, especially right now, baseball season. But I got to get that yeah. TikTok stuff going more. I was I was really knocking it dead, and then COVID came and knocked me. I just stopped doing that stuff. So, but I'll be getting right. back into it now. You know, that's and right. We got we got a show. Right. Hopefully, uh, 
we were getting close to selling it right now. Me and my son, we created this show called Band of Idiots. Um, nice. It's basically nice. about all his high school friends and me. Um, yeah. It's a comedy, but very funny. Very funny. So we hope one of these streamers will pick it up. And um, I think you'd like it. I think you'd definitely like it. No, for sure. For sure. I love it. I love it, actually, because I love everything that you guys do, man. It's, you know, it's, it's, Thank it's, you. You guys keep it real. Keep it raw. We appreciate yeah. you. Uh, once again, we appreciate you, Nick. Appreciate your family. You're yeah. great. And uh, I'm gonna leave you. I'm gonna leave you with one of my favorite songs, and uh, we can just ride out to this. Basically, I All like. Right. I like the artist you said. This one right here is uh, Teddy Pimmick. Teddy Pimmick. Teddy. Oh, oh, oh man. I miss you, baby. That's the